Are lengthened partials superior for muscle growth? Let's check out the latest research and see what it's got to say. Over the past few years, lengthened partials have certainly gained a lot of attention on social media. Now, for those of you that aren't familiar, these are reps performed in the stretched or lengthened position of an exercise, and they're often taken beyond the point of momentary failure. Now, while the hype has been strong, how do they truly compare to full range of motion training when it comes to muscle growth? A recent study by Larson and colleagues adds new insight into the discussion by comparing two popular calf training techniques. Condition one was lengthened partial calf raises taken to failure, and condition two was full range of motion calf raises followed by lengthened partials. So let's break it down. Now, before we dive in, what has previous research been able to tell us? Well, earlier work from the same research group explored a similar concept in non-resistance trained individuals. In that study, participants doing lengthened partials beyond failure, which they termed lengthened partial supersets or LPSS, saw 0.19 centimeters of growth in the medial gastrocnemius compared to 0.14 centimeters for the traditional full range of motion training group. Now, that's just a difference of 0.05 centimeters, yet these findings were totally sensationalized online with claims of 43% more muscle growth in the length and partial condition. While technically that is true in terms of percentages, it's actually very misleading to report it this way, when the actual magnitude of growth is actually quite small. A minor difference in growth isn't likely meaningful and certainly shouldn't drive broad training recommendations, at least not without more data. So what did this new study do differently? Well, this new study by Larson and colleagues recruited 23 resistance trained individuals defined as training at least two times per week for the past three years. Now, in my opinion, this study population is slightly more relevant than untrained individuals, as it likely applies to most of you listening, who are just your average gym goers, fitness enthusiasts, or physique athletes. Using a within subject design, each participant trained both legs separately. One leg did Smith machine calf raises with full range of motion, followed by lengthened partials taken beyond the failure. Now, the other leg performed just lengthened partials taken to failure only. It's also worth noting that three of the participants were not currently including calf work in their routines, which may have influenced the responsiveness. But moving on, let's take a look at their training protocol and measurements. Training occurred twice per week for eight weeks. The lengthened partial group used a 10 to 20 rep max range, while the full range of motion plus partial group used a 5 to 10 rep max followed by 5 to 10 partial reps. The authors suggested that this specific rep setup allowed for a balanced comparison in training volume between both legs. And lastly, the medial gastrocnemius muscle thickness was measured pre and post intervention using B-mode ultrasound. So let's take a look at the results. What did they find? Well, the results showed strikingly similar muscle growth to their previous study, with 0.19 centimeters growth for the length and partial group and 0.13 centimeters growth for the full range of motion plus partial group. That's a difference of just 0.06 centimeters. Again, a very small difference between both groups. The authors go on to suggest that there may be a slight advantage for length and partials, but they do exercise caution in their interpretation due to the modest difference and limitation in study design. So what is my main takeaway? Well, it's very likely that you'll see this very study used to promote lengthened partials as being a superior way to train. But based on this data, the difference is minimal and should be interpreted with such nuance. Both training approaches were effective for increasing medial gastrocnemius thickness. So if you enjoy training full range of motion on your calves, and it's working for you, then there's no compelling reason to toss it aside in favor of length and partial. So as always, context matters, as does enjoyment, consistency, and recovery in your long-term progress. Now, before I wrap up, if you are ready to take your physique training to the next level, apply for my one-on-one -on -one coaching, which is available in the links in the description of this video or start lifting smarter with my evidence-based workout app, Be A Fit, which is available on iOS and Android.